Okay, everything is up and ready. All right, perfect. All right, good evening, everybody, and welcome to the May 19th, 2021 full board meeting of Manhattan Community Board 6. My name is Kyle Othide, and I'm the chair of CB6. This meeting is being called to order at 7.03 p.m. Tonight, we are joined by Secretary Seema Shaw, District Manager Jesus Perez, and Community Associate Brendan Burke. In order to conduct an efficient meeting tonight, let's observe a few ground rules. First, no one may speak until granted the floor. Two, CB6 members, if you have a question about board business or wish to make a motion, please raise your hand through Zoom. If you click on the participants icon, the participants panel should appear and you should find the raise hand function there. If you still have technical difficulty, please click the chat icon and relay your difficulty to us. Third, the chat function should not be used for CB6 business or questions about agenda topics. All such remarks should be made on the record by raising your hand through Zoom. Chat should only be used to alert us to any technical difficulties you are having or to state in writing information such as an email address that was already stated aloud on the record during the meeting. When a member is given the floor to speak, I, as the chair, will identify you and you can unmute yourself so that you can speak. Next, we are required by executive order to create a verbatim transcript of this meeting. So everyone, please keep your questions and comments succinct and germane to the discussion. And lastly, to the members of the public, if you wish to give remarks during the public session and have not already registered by filling out the form on the CB6 website ahead of time, you can register to speak in the public session by using the Q&A feature of Zoom and posting your name, affiliation, and what specific topic you wish to speak about. This needs to be done by 7.15 p.m. The agenda for tonight's meeting was distributed ahead of time by the board office, was posted online, and appears on the screen before you. If there is no objection, we will adopt the agenda as stated. The board members, if you object to adopting the agenda, please raise your hand through Zoom. Okay, seeing no objections, the agenda for tonight's meeting is adopted. Now I'll send this over to Secretary Seema Shah, who will take attendance by roll call. Hi everyone, good evening. Welcome to tonight's meeting. Um, if you could just unmute yourself and share that you're here verbally, that would be great. Um, Kyle Latai. Present. Asiya Badi. Present. Uh, Neil Barclay. Neil. Martin Barrett. Present. Elvie Barroso. Present. Matt Bondi. Here. Claire Brennan. Present. Jim Collins. Jim, are you here? Don't see you. Dan Devine. Present. Beatrice Dismond. Present. Jeannie D'Onofrio. Present. Rick Eggers. Present. Uh, Charles Fernandez. Present. Andrew Gross. Present. Adam Hartke. Uh, present. Molly Hollister. Paige Judge. Paige, are you here? Yusuf Khaled. Yusuf? John Keller. Present. Abigail Kruzmark. Present. Anton Molnar. Present. Kavita Matthew. Present. Sandra McKee. Present. Wells McGauley. Present. Rick Richard Mintz. Present. Uh, Philip Napolitano. Philip Napolitano. He's excused, Seema. Okay, great, thank you. Uh, Rajesh Nair. Present. Kevin O'Keefe. 
Present. Krishma Patel. Present. Matt Roberts. Present. Gene Santoro. Here. Frank Scala. Frank. Lawrence Scher. Present. Ann Seligman. Present. Lou Sapersky. Yo. I'm here. Sean Sherman. Yo. <laughs> Sandra Sherrod. Sandra. Letty Simon. Present. Susan Steinberg. Present. Anju Suresh. Present. Mark Thompson. Mark is excused tonight. Thank you. Corinne Vanderdonk. Present. Brian Van Nuvenhoven. Present. Present. All right. Gotcha. Ronnie White. Present. Claude and Claude Winfield. Present. Great. We have quorum. Thanks, everyone. Thank you, Seema. So I have asked all of our elected officials to send over the reports ahead of time so that we can compile them and use this time for questions. You can find all of the reports that were submitted on the CB6 website. The link to the reports was disseminated ahead of time to all board members and the general public and for your convenience can now be found in the chat below. I will now call on each of the elected officials who have RSVP so that they can take questions from CB6 members and the public about their pre-submitted reports. Each elected official will have one minute to field questions. If there are no questions, we will move to the next elected official on our list. If an elected official has a time sensitive matter to report on that didn't make it into their pre-submitted report, they will have time to do so tonight. So let's begin. Uh, first up, we have Ling Jun Chen from District Attorney Vance's office. Hi, good evening, everyone. My name is Ling Jun Chen. I'm the community coordinator with the Manhattan District Attorney's office. So I have two updates today. The first, our office has created a new presentation regarding hate crimes. And we already presented several times in Chinatown. And we want to conduct this presentation throughout Manhattan schools. So if anyone is interested in such presentation, feel free to contact with me. I will share my contact information in the chat. And second, we have our 2021 Youth Against Hate poster contest. It is open to all Manhattan public school students, grades six to eight, and the winner school will receive $1,000 to be used to create an anti-hate initiative. Uh, I will share the flyer in the chat too. That's all for me today. Thank you, Ling Jun. Thank you. Are there any questions for the district attorney's office? All right, there's a hand from John Keller. John? John? Excuse me, I had trouble unmuting, my apologies. Um, yeah, I chair the education committee. Um, is, the, is the presentation focused on schools? Um, you were doing it in schools? Yeah, we right now we currently are like conducting two schools, but we also conducting two community organizations. Okay, is your uh, connection information in the uh, chat? Yeah, yeah, I will okay, put my in, in the chat. Then. Thank you. Thank you. We might want yeah. you to come to one of our committee meetings. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Thank you. All right, thank you, John. Asia, you have the floor. Thanks, Kyle. Um, I was wondering, Linjun, if you could share the information on the competition with the board office so we can yeah, share it with, yeah. our, with our schools in our district. That would be great. Yeah. Um, they can put it out. Thank you. Yeah, definitely. Thank you, Alcia. And now Dan Devine. Hi. Hi, I was just a little, I was, uh, you know, it's terrible what's going on. Uh, I saw something in Chinatown the other day. Um, but can, I, don't, I hear a lot about the rise in hate crimes, but do you have a little better sense being in the DA's office around, um, you know, what this, what this is perpetrated by, kind of the demographics or people being caught? What's it like sort of from your end trying to not only you know, increase community support and awareness, but also kind of uh, put a stop to the perpetrators. Um, so since I was very new to our um, office, I started working last month. So 
I will get. <laughs> sorry about that. Ah,、uh, I will get your question and do you mind send me an email or anything? I can share my contact information to the chat. Then I will get back to my office. Then we can give you an answer because right now. I don't have an answer for you. Sorry about that. Welcome to the Sorry. job. <laughs> Sorry about that. Thank you. And、uh, Ronnie. Hi.、Uh, good evening, everyone.、Uh, my question is: I understand that a, a friend of mine spoke to me recently, and、um, I understand in the past there had been、um, poster campaigns similar to this、uh, that had,、uh, um, you know.、Uh, Of people who had、uh, some、uh, issues that arose from、uh, the competition, can you please just explain exactly what the parameters are、uh, for the students to submit、okay. the work? Thank you. All right. Um. So it's a poster contest. Uh. Every pub. Uh. Manhattan public students, grades six to eight, and. It can be hand hand drawn, as far as I know, and or also computer designed, and the deadline is June fourth. So thank you.、Linjong. That's all. Yeah, that's all the information. The parameters are on the on the website as well. So if you're、yeah. interested,、uh, visit the link. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you so much, Ling Jun, and welcome to Manhattan Community Ward Six. And we hope to see you. Thank you. you. Thank you.、Uh, next up, we have Brees from Assembly Member Godfrey's office. Hi, Brees. I think you're still on mute. All right. I think we're having some technical difficulties. Uh, I believe the Manhattan Borough President Gail Brewer is here, so let's turn it over、uh, to the Borough President. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I am here, and I'm glad to take questions. I know one of them might be when are the appointments and reappointments going to be? So they'll will be done for June first, if not sooner.、Um, obviously, they'll be done for your next month's meeting. I'm sorry about the delay. We have an awful lot of applicants. The usual COVID stuff makes it harder. So there. Soon to be done, and then the second issue is we sent the report in. The only thing I want to add, because it came in before we done this, we did send out a letter about the dirt bikes and the ATVs. It's gotten a lot of ATVs. It's gotten a lot of discussion.、Um, that's an issue、uh, for I think those that are riding together often、uh, could be dangerous. One person was hit in the、uh, inward section over the weekend.、Um, I don't want people arrested. That's my Perspective, but I do know that cops can't follow them. Somebody could get hurt. But what we do suggest is they have to、um, fill up the tanks at the gas station. So we want to have confiscation at the gas station if appropriate, and certainly, you know, figuring out how the gas station cannot be so welcoming. So I'm just trying to deal with this issue because it's from the bottom to the top of Manhattan. I am getting complaints. That everything else, I think. Um, is in the material. I will say that every Tuesday at three o'clock, I think some of you participate. You're all welcome. We have、uh, what's going on vaccine-wise in Manhattan, and what's going on recovery-wise. And you know, we've had the head of、um, the recovery effort for the city, and just this week we had the IBO Independent Budget Office with every single penny that's coming from Washington, and that's on our website. It was a great what I've been looking for, ju- just done for this call. Um, a lot of money for education and other things, and then secondly, we had Fred Dixon with all the tourism aspects, and then、um, somebody from the Harlem community on tourism. I suggest if you have time, it's a great phone call, just an hour, and you get an awful lot of information. So I just want to bring that to your attention. Most of it is up on our website、um, in terms of your if you're interested in the future. But we have a lot of money coming to our city, and I just worry that it's not going to be spent effectively. So keep Uh, up to date on that, and then you know we're all trying to get the senior centers open. I assume you're working to try to do a resolution along those lines, but I would love to see those senior centers open. The seniors are very upset, and I don't blame them. Thank you. And、uh, I actually, yeah, and I actually sit on that、uh, call as well, and I know several other members do as well. So thank you for putting those on every week. There is a lot of information,、uh, but we do have a question uh, from uh, Kavita. So Kavita, you have the floor. 
Thank you, Kyle. Um, hi, Borough President Brewer. Um, just a question for you about um, the MSBI working group and if there's any kind of pending meetings on that or updates on that. I haven't heard anything in a while. Okay, I don't know, but let me find out and I'll get back to you because I don't know either. So let me find out. I'm sorry okay. not to have a good answer, but I will let you know. Thank you so much. Yeah. Are there any other questions for the Borough President? All right, seeing none. Thank you. Thank you, Borough President. Uh, is uh, Brees available now? Was he able to fix the technical issue? All right, I guess we're still working on it. I'm uh, sorry, well, I, I, was, I wasn't planning on reporting tonight, I'm sorry. Okay, no problem. Uh, next up, we have Assembly Member Harvey Epstein. Thank you, Kyle, and good evening, everyone. The only quick update, it says um, we passed a bill, one of my bills today, which uh, you know, source of income discrimination is illegal in New York State, but no one knows about it. So uh, we, we were able to pass that out of the assembly today that requires all government agencies when they give people vouchers to let them know about source of income discrimination and how to file complaints around that. So it was a little victory and uh, hopefully Senator Hoyleman will be able to pass the bill in the upcoming weeks. And there's a question or two, I'm happy to answer them, Kyle. Awesome. Yeah, my report, and Joanne is here. Thank you and congratulations on the passage. Um, are there any questions for assembly member Epstein? All right, seeing none. Thank you, Assembly Member. Appreciate it. Uh, next Thank up. Thank you. Have a good night, everyone. Next up, we have Katie Loeb from Carlina Rivera's office. Hi, everyone. Thanks for having me. Uh, happy to answer questions. Thank you. Are there any questions for Council Member Rivera's office? If you have a question, please put it, if you're from the public, please put it in the Q&A section. Uh, Sandy, you have the floor. I saw in your report that there's, um, was passed uh, a bill regarding open streets. And I'm wondering what that focuses on. I think um, many of the community groups have found it very difficult to go ahead with the program. Yeah, absolutely. So the bill on open streets that passed is um, is targeted towards like the streets that are operated by community groups, and it lays out a process by which smaller organizations, volunteer based organizations, and community groups can apply to operate an open street and actually have access to additional resources from the Department of Transportation than they have now. Um, so it's really exciting. It's um, you know kind of one of those. Um, part of the COVID recovery that's going to improve our city overall by cre creating more open public space and creating more opportunities for local organizations and, you know, neighbors, the community to actually get involved and, you know, take ownership of space. Um, so the, it, the mayor just signed it into law and the Department of Transportation then like works on that framework. Um, Within, it, within the strictures of the bill and there will be a community-based process and we'll be keeping everybody updated on how it's going because this is you know, obviously uh, hu hugely important for not just our office, but the whole city. And I know a community board six priorities. So um, yeah, sign up for our newsletter, keep in touch and more information as that comes out and the applications open up and the process is, is uh, finalized. Great, thank you. Absolutely. Yeah. We also have a question from the public, uh, from Sean. He writes in the chat, uh, has there been any support on limiting future uh, after hours variances or giving more representation by community boards? Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much for that question, Sean. Um, the council just had a hearing on our after hours variance bill. So this is a bill that Carlina worked on when she worked for the previous council member and which she's carried through council, it's very difficult. Like there's a lot of people who don't like this bill because it limits the amount of construction that you can do after hours. And so the council finally held a hearing on it, which is really exciting movement. Um, probably there might be some amendments based on that hearing, but the bill would limit um, after hours construction to three weeknights and one weekend um, based on the number of other um, variances in the area. 
and then emergency work would would be given um you know obviously if if it's not one of the area's nights but a water main bursts or something like that well that construction could, could continue after hours um, out of necessity so there will probably be a few tweaks but definitely um you know again keep in touch this is really exciting that it's gotten some movement and hopefully we'll see it past this term and if not of course we'll we'll keep pushing for it next term awesome thank you katie are there any other questions for council member rivera's office all right seeing none thank you so much for joining us katie yeah thank you uh, next up, we have Michael Stinson from the New York City Comptroller's Office. Yeah, I'm going to gift you all one minute back if you don't have any questions because I have no updates. Okay, perfect. Are there any questions for the New York City Comptroller's Office? All right, seeing none. Thank you, Michael. All right, next up, we have Pat from Council Member Power's Office. Hi, everyone. How's everyone doing? Pretty good. Thanks for joining us. Are there any questions for Council Member Powers' office? All right, seeing no questions for you, Pat. Thank you for joining us tonight. Absolutely, thank you for having me. Is Sam Vasquez here from Senator Holman's office or Senator Holman himself? Hi, Kyle. Uh, hey. Happy to take any questions. All right. Are there any questions for Senator Holman's office from the board? All right, I see a question from Sean in the public. I think he chatted. Uh, yeah. Oh, it was for Patrick. Um, Pat, could you put your contact information uh, so that you can uh, Okay, perfect. Sean has it. All right. Are there any other questions for Senator Holman's office? All right. Seeing none. Thank you for so much for joining us, Sam. Thank you, Kyle. Uh, next up, we have Madeline from Senator Kruger's office. Hi, Kyle. Hi, CB6. Happy to answer any questions. Awesome. All right. So are there any questions for Senator Kruger's office? All right, seeing none. Thank you, Madeline. Thank you. Oh, I do see a question, sorry. Sandy? Sure. Yeah, I just wondered if there was any update on the um, really exciting discussion we had last month about the Greenway and the monies available. Ooh, that's a good question. Um, I'm not sure, but let me check on it and get back in touch with you. I know our office, um, sir, and our office works on land use and was in touch with Congresswoman Maloney's office. So let me try to get an update for you. Um, Sandy, I'll let you know and then and you, you can update your committee. Thanks. Thank you. Madeline, um, this is Ann Seligman. If you could copy me on that update as well, that'd be great. Sure. All right. All right, seeing no further questions. Thank you so much, Madeline. Thank you. And finally, we have Taylor from Congresswoman Maloney's office. Hi, uh, so no other updates besides what was in this report um, in regards to the funding, the request was put into the transportation infrastructure bill, um, which we hope will get moving at some point. Uh, but the request was put in there, I can ask for the full details of it from the lead team, but uh, it's a waiting game at this point. Any questions, happy to ask, yeah. Great, thank you. Are there any questions for Congresswoman Maloney's office? All right. So was I, just to follow up, was that request for funding for the, the project that was just mentioned? Yeah, for that stretch of the episode. Okay. Yeah, uh, just to provide some clarification. Yeah, I think we, we yeah. both talked about it at. Uh, with yeah, Senator I'm like, Carolyn. we got the letter from you all. I got it to the folks in DC. They said it was put in. Uh, I can get the exact language of what they put in uh, over to you. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Thank you. All right, seeing no other further questions, Taylor. Thank you. And finally, sorry, we have Wilfredo from Council Member Kalos's office. Hi everyone, uh, no updates uh, other than uh, what council member put in the, the video. So happy to answer any questions. Thank you. 
Right, are there any questions for council member Kalos's office? All right, I have a question from Sandy. Sandy, you have the floor. Um, well, Fredo, I know you came to discuss the um, comprehensive um, planning. Do you know if we're any closer to having that bill be discussed or move forward? There hasn't been any updates. Um, I don't foresee there being any movement on that bill over the next few weeks because of the budget. Uh, that's pretty much the priority at the moment. Um, if we do hear anything different, I'll be sure to, uh, you know, alert uh, CB6. Um, but there, you know, after the, the hearing, there are a lot of uh, changes that have to go into that bill, a lot of revisions that are being, uh, you know, explored by the, by the committee. Uh, so it's going to go through a lengthy process. Uh, but any updates, I will be sure to alert you. Thank you. So we have no sense of timing of when we might actually get comprehensive planning. It won't be anything um, in my in my estimation. Won't be anything in the next month or so. Um, there's a lot of uh, reviewing that's going to happen. Um, but typically, with these types of bills, you know, there's the budget. Then you have the the summer kind of break where there are very few hearings. Um, and then usually around September, things ramp up fairly quickly. Um, and given the fact that we're towards the end of, you know, term for a lot of council members, there will be a lot of legislative action happening from September through uh, midnight on December 31st. Um, so my guess is that, you know, this will be something that if it's not, if it doesn't move by, uh, and by move, I mean, like if there isn't like a revision, uh, you know, given up, before the beginning of June, we're probably not gonna see anything until after the summer. Great, thank you. All right, thank you. Are there any further questions for council member Kalos's office? All right, seeing none, thank you so much, Wilfredo. Uh, and lastly, uh, we're just joined by assembly member of court's office. Uh, Alex, do you wanna introduce yourself? Yes, hi everybody. This is my CD6 debut. Um, <laughs> I am filling in for Rebecca today because she is at CB8. Um, I'm the assembly member's deputy chief of staff. Um, I don't have too much to add other than um, a quick update on one of the items in the report. Um, we were planning on sending a letter to the mayor in support of reopening senior centers that has been sent out today. Um, and we will continue to um, advocate for that and happy to answer any questions. Awesome. Are there any questions for assembly member court's office? All right, seeing none. Thank you very much, Alex, for joining us today. Thank you. All right, Jesus, are there any other uh, electeds who did not RSVP who are present? I don't seem to see any more. Okay, so has anyone signed up to speak in the public session? Yes, three people have. And the first one on the list is uh, Anne Fazaro, who is a resident of Community District 6. Uh, she would like to make remarks about the proliferation of pet owners who do not curb their dogs. Uh, Ms. Fazaro, you have the floor for three minutes. Is she unmuted? Ms. Pizarro, can you unmute yourself? How about now? Now we hear you a little louder though, please. Thank you, sorry about that. Um, with regard to the new greenways being planned and other green areas, will there also be taken into consideration that there are uh, more little doggy areas for just pets? Um, needed because it seems to be happening quite frequently, I would say in the last few years with the proliferation of uh, dog owners and very large dogs that many people in the different areas of the city, not just in this area, uh, allow their pets to stop in the middle of the sidewalk, urinate, excrete, and then they walk away. I've witnessed it quite often. We've talked about it on the Next Door Neighbor website. And um, it's, it seems to be, you know, especially in this past year with the pandemic, it seems to be a, a big 
uh, concern for people. Does that conclude your remarks? Yes, thank you. Thank you. All right, next person on the list is Mr. Sean Bakehill, who is a resident of this district. He would like to make remarks about land use matters, after hours variances, and quality of life concerns. Hi, guys. Um, okay, there we are. All right. <laughs> um, I am here just to bring a little bit of awareness to um, a lot of things that are happening in our district today. I want to discuss mostly um, the number of after hour variances. Your audio is going in and out. You're good. Oh. Just the connection is okay. Yeah, let me try. Thank you. Uh, um, is it better? Better now, oh, yeah. Okay, cool. Um, uh, the, the, my concern is that for the past month, I've been listening to jackhammering that has exceeded um, 90 decibels uh, for about five weeks in a row. The construction has mostly come to a close. Um, I spent hours sending videos, making 311 complaints with DOB, DEP, and um, I even spoke with uh, Mario Bruno today, who is the head of the assistant director of, of community affairs or whatever. And um, the I want to the goal of my uh, comments today is to bring um, just awareness to the fact that our community, um, our city in DOB, has a conflict of interest in issuing these AHVs because they generate revenue. But there is, there's nothing being done to actually enforce these. Um, I made eight complaints, and I have videos showing them at 20 times the permissible allowance. And DEP stood by their inspectors, uh, pulling down below 78. Um, found that they were not in violation, and I even talked to the to the company that owns the site, and they apologized, and they were like. We know we're not following the law, but there's nothing we can do. And my government that's supposed to, to be enforcing these rules, they're not doing that. And I wanna make bring awareness to this topic because we have a lot of projects that are being um, slated that will require after our variances in our neighborhood. And I would like to see our community demand enforcement or and or proper oversight over these projects because I'm a taxpayer and I want to sleep. I don't want to listen to concrete being jackhammered off the steel. And that's all I have for today. Thank you, Sean. Welcome. All right, the next person on the list is uh, Lauren Green, a resident of Community District 6, uh, who would like to speak about environment and health matters. Lauren Green, I don't actually see that they are here. No, nope, they don't appear to be here. So that concludes the uh, list of speakers on the public session. All right, thank you, Jesus. So we'll move on to the adoption of the previous meeting school board minutes. The minutes from the April 14th full board meeting were distributed ahead of time by the board office. If there is no objection, we will adopt the minutes from that meeting. Board members, if you object to adopting the minutes, please raise your hand through Zoom. Seeing no objections, the minutes from April 14th full board meeting are adopted. They will soon be available on the CB6 website. 
So moving on to the chair's report, I have a very brief uh, report today. Uh, the first thing was already mentioned by uh, two of our elected representatives, uh, which is after our last school board meeting, uh, I worked with our land use chair and our transportation chair, Adam and Jean, on putting together a letter about the EGAP and finding uh, some federal funding for that. Uh, we were able to send that and we're happy to report uh, that the Congresswoman was very receptive to that and did advocate on our behalf uh, in that infrastructure bill, and we'll be sure to keep you updated as we hear more on that. Uh, the second item is that at the end of April, as you may recall, we put together a uh, reimagining the future of education, uh, community conversation, in partnership with the Executive Superintendent from Manhattan, um, Marisol Rosales, as well as the District 2 Superintendent, Kelly McGuire, Happy to report that the event went really, really well. It was very well attended. There were numerous local principals, teachers, uh, some of my old teachers actually were on the call, uh, as well as a, num a number of parents and students who provided their insight about what worked for them and what didn't work for them. Uh, overall, it was a very big success and we continue to welcome DOE to put such programs in our district going forward. Uh, but I do wanna thank uh, John, the chair of our Youth and Education Committee, um, for the very difficult task of hurting DOE and making sure that we got a date down and coordinating. Uh, but also a very special thanks to Brendan. Um, we have been uh, short on the staff uh, since Cody left and Brendan really uh, stepped up to the plate. Uh, so I wanna thank him uh, and just you know applaud him for his uh, focus, for his confidence and for um, his leadership on this. So thank you so much, Brendan. Uh, for that. And that concludes my report. It looks like uh, Ann Seligman requests the floor. Yes, Ann, do you have a question? Um, yeah, I'm just wondering um, about the uh, process for, not that we could ever replace Cody, but uh, for, for a new hire and, and kind of how that's moving yeah. along so that so, takes some of the heat off Brendan and Jesus. So perfect segue to go to the district manager's uh, report. Yes, perfect segue. <laughs> Thank you. Um, all right, so as you are uh, all very aware, um, Cody, our uh, assistant district manager left our employee about two months ago to pursue an opportunity in the private sector. He tells me that he's doing very well in his new role, and I'm sure we continue to wish him the best of luck. Additionally, I can report tonight that we will be without an assistant district manager no longer because I am happy to announce that effective immediately, our new assistant district manager is our very own Brendan Berth. Uh, Brendan was uh, up until tonight, a community associate here at CB6, he has been on our staff for almost three years and in that time has proven himself wonderfully adept at working to resolve constituent complaints from residents of our district. I can recall that back in pre-pandemic times, our chair uh, at the time would frequently relay to me that she'd be in attendance at this or that community event and residents would approach her raving about how well Brendan helped them resolve a problem that they had with a city agency. Um, and one of our current board members even took the time to type out an actual letter to me on paper to commend Brendan for his work helping to resolve a potentially hazardous condition in the neighborhood. Uh, Brendan has also been super helpful in the office with research and can help organize an event like nobody's business. Uh, I have also only ever seen him be a consummate professional, which in my book counts for a lot. Uh, before his time at CB6, Brendan had ties to our community in his roles as intern and constituent services fellow at Councilmember Kalos' office and an intern at then Assemblymember Kavanaugh's office. Here at CB6, we do like to provide opportunities for professional growth and development for our staff whenever we can, and Brendan certainly has earned this. So, Brendan, congratulations. Uh, so that means we are in the process of filling Brendan's community associate position. Uh, we are actually in the midst of interviewing candidates right now. So uh, at next month's full board meeting, we will hear more about that. That concludes my report. Thank you. Uh, Marty, do you have a question for Jesus? Uh, 
Uh, sorry, I had uh, at this time of year is when the uh, chair uh, nominates the uh, nominating committee, but I, I just reviewed the charter. It's the June meeting. So at the June at the June meeting, you uh, indicate who's on the. Uh, nominating committee, though I think it was renamed <laughs> uh, a year or two ago. And uh, then individuals have 30 days to uh, self-nominate by email to, to the committee and or to the district manager. But again, that's June, so right. never mind. Thank <laughs> <Drop> you. <the hand. laughs> no, you're thinking ahead, I appreciate it. <laughs> All right, thank you. Uh, we'll now move on to the treasurer's report. Thank you. I'm having nothing but audio problems tonight. Perfect. Um, Perfect. <laughs> our, our OMB gave us a budget summary report dated May 3rd for the month of April. Uh, that shows that our personal services budget for the year is adjusted to 202,540. This is not a part of the official report, but if you remember, they pulled this down a little bit because we weren't gonna spend it and it was our budget cut for the year due to the pandemic. So, um, but anyway, it's 202,000 now. We have a balance of 47,726 with 154,813 spent or obligated. Our current budget for other than personal services, excluding rent, is 154,659. This figure contains 110,185 of our retained street fair money from years past when there were street fairs. We wish, hopefully we'll have street fairs again at some point in the future. But our remaining OTPS budget after that money is accounted for is 44,474. 44,474. We have a balance of 10,514 with 33,960 spent or obligated. Those are identical to last month's numbers. Finally, we have a rent budget of 162,935. It's already been used to pay our rent obligations for the entire fiscal year. Does anyone have any questions? Seeing none. Seeing none. All right, thank you very much. Thank you, Brian. All right, we have now arrived at our committee reports and resolutions. In order to conduct an efficient meeting, let's observe a few ground rules. So as a reminder, one, no one may speak until granted the floor. Uh, no matter how small or big the comment, please raise your hand uh, before I recognize you. Two, board members, if you have a question or wish to make a motion, please raise your hand through Zoom. Three, the chat function should not be used for board business or questions about agenda topics. All such remarks should be made on the record by raising your hand through Zoom. Chat should only be used to alert us to any technical difficulties you are having or to state in writing information such as an email address or link that was already stated aloud on the record during the meeting. When a board member is given the floor to speak, I will identify you. Now to members of the public, please note that during this session of the meeting, we only entertain questions from members of the board. And lastly, again, we are required by executive order to create a verbatim transcript of this meeting. So please keep your questions and comments succinct and germane to the discussion. So tonight we are again using a digital ballot. The CB6 staff will post a link to the ballot in the chat. Please open this ballot, select your name from the list of board members and select your vote on each resolution as it is presented. Do not hit submit until later in the evening after the final resolution has been presented. At the end of the meeting, once you have indicated all of your votes on your ballot, only then should you submit the ballot. You will not be able to submit the ballot unless you vote on every resolution. If you plan on abstaining, please select abstain. Final vote counts will be announced after the second roll call, so please stick around for that. If any part of our voting procedure is unclear, Please raise your hand through Zoom and we will address your question. All right, so the link should be in the chat. Either click on it or please copy and paste it into your browser. 
Okay, so let's get started. First up, we have public safety. All right, thanks, Kyle. Good evening, everyone. Uh, we have one resolution that we'll be voting on tonight on the from the Public Safety Committee. Uh, I will note that Resolution 1B is being withdrawn uh, due to the passage of the legislation in Washington, which the president has vowed to see that he will sign. So uh, we'll, if, are there any questions for 1A? So if there are no questions, then vote on 1A. Correct. All right. So everybody, please go to your digital ballot. Oh, sorry. Hold up. We need a motion first. Apologies. No. So is, are there any questions from the board on this? I'm seeing none. Are there any questions from the public? Sorry. Yeah, Lou? When the committee re, uh, introduces a resolution, that's considered to be a motion. Uh, the only motion you need after that is to call the question uh, and then to uh, take the vote. The committee's, as I said, the committee's introduction is considered the introduction of the motion. Okay, perfect. Well, I will call to question. Second. Sorry, who was that? Could you raise your hand? <laughs> it was Anne. All right, Anne. Uh, can you raise your hand next time just so I can see who it is? Thank you. All right, there's a, thank you, Anne. I see your hand, call to question. Second, this is Ronnie. All right, thank you, Ronnie, that is seconded. So everybody, please go to your digital ballot. Mark your vote for this resolution. This is 1A and do not hit submit. And for those who are not using the digital ballot, we will ask for your vote verbally during the second roll call. I will ask for resolution 1B. Uh, anyone, uh, folks, just vote whatever on that resolution, because it has been withdrawn, we will uh, purge that line from the ballot uh, tomorrow. Uh, just because the ballot will not let you submit if you have anything unvoted on, just for 1B, since it was withdrawn, vote whatever you want and it will not matter because we will remove that from the ballots tomorrow. Okay, thank you. So while that's going on, Matt, do you have a report for us? Yeah, just real quick. Um, so again, tomorrow night is our committee meeting for the month of May. I know there were a lot of people last month who uh, wanted to be heard on the matter of police reform. We will again bring that up for discussion. Um, and we will also have uh, updates from both of our police precincts uh, tomorrow. That's at 630. All right. Thank you, Matt. And yes, again, I stress, if you want to have input on this discussion, please attend tomorrow evening. So are there any other questions from the board for Matt? All right, seeing none, thank you, Matt. Next up, we have youth and education. Hi, thanks, Kyle. And first of all, Kyle already, uh, we've been very busy as a committee uh, this month. Kyle already mentioned the uh, very impactful meeting that uh, we sponsored with Marisol Rosales and Kelly McGuire. We had over 100 attendants, and I too would like to shout out to Brendan for his uh, work in making that happen. It wouldn't have happened without him. Uh, we also were co-sponsors of a uh, very useful meeting on dyslexia with Community Board 2 and the Community Education Council for District 2, which has a, a committee on dyslexia. And it was a two hour meeting with over a hundred attendees again and uh, uh, very impactful. I hope those of you who attended it found it useful. Uh, we are moving ahead with uh, uh, our next meeting with uh, 
Councilmember Kalos's initiative to find uh, space for pre-K and 3K uh, sites, and we will be discussing that tomorrow. Uh, I attended a meeting uh, with a group of people, uh, including Congresswoman Baloney, uh, on that. So uh, I encourage people who are interested in the topic to attend our meeting tomorrow night. Uh, and in the future, we will uh, be considering, though not tomorrow, uh, the proximity of smoke shops to schools at the current point, there is nothing, no illegality taking place, but uh, there are issues that many parents have raised, especially if and when those shops start selling pot. So uh, keep, we'll probably have our June meeting on that, but I'll get more on that later. Thank you. That's it. All right. Thank you, John. Are there any questions from the board for John? All right. Seeing none. Thank you, John. Next up, we have land use and waterfront. Hello. Good evening, everyone. Um, no items to vote on this evening. However, uh, my chair's report is going to focus on the upcoming meetings that we are going to have basically from now until the end of the summer. So we have six ULERPs that we will be weighing in on as a committee and as a board. Uh, between now and the and, and, Ju and our June land use meeting on the 28th. So um, Hayes Use has been working diligently to sort of coordinate all of the spinning plates from the various projects with DCP and others. Um, and so what we have done is, is that we've sketched out sort of a rough timeline um, that um, we thought was pretty set in stone as of yesterday, but however, there's still some tentative things. So all of you as board members should have received the Wednesday email. And so for the past two Wednesdays um, and previously, Jesus and the board and, and Brendan have included helpful links and information on every one of these land use items and a detailed schedule for when we're going to be hearing them. Um, and so for this upcoming meeting on the 24th, we're going to be hearing two items. One is for 343 Madison, uh, which is the old MTA headquarters, and then the zoning accessibility for transit text amendment. And so um, Sandy has taken the lead on 343 Madison and Larry is taking the lead on zoning for accessibility. So if you're interested in either of those topics and would like to get involved, please reach out to them. Um, so there, these are going to be very short turnaround and time frames. So if you would like to participate in this on these public hearings next Monday, uh, again, check your email from a couple hours ago, click on the links. There was a lot of information there, uh, from DCP, uh, and the MTA, uh, for the, um, the text amendment. And also George Janes will be writing memos on these to inform the committee as well. So there's going to be forthcoming information. So after that, um, the city hotel special permit text amendment. So that's gonna be held at the strategic planning, uh, uh, strategic planning committee. Um, and so again, same, same applies as what I said before, but that's gonna be on 6-3. So thank you for Kavitha for sort of uh, helping uh, bear the load. Um, here's where it gets a little tricky. Uh, we have scheduled a tentative meeting for June 2nd uh, to hear 175 Park Avenue. This is the former Hyatt Commodore and the open rest or excuse me, the health and fitness text amendment. However, uh, there might be a conflict with CB5. We've been coordinating with uh, CB5 regarding both 343 and the Commodore. Uh, they're, they're having a hearing that night. And so um, stay tuned we'll we'll probably get an answer within the next day or so of when we're actually going to hear these um and then sort of the the bit of good news and this sort of uh uh i don't know nothing like waiting to the last minute especially when it comes to important land use actions and an outgoing administration uh is the open restaurants text amendment so uh there was a referendum a while ago is that if these land use items these ulerps do not certify before uh june uh, basically, we have the entire summer to review, which is great. Uh, so the open restaurants tax amendment is supposed to certify on June 7th, and we will hear that on uh, June our June 28th meeting. And so we'll have the whole summer to um, 
uh, review and to write a resolution and we will vote on that in the early September uh, full board. Uh, the bad news is, is that all of the prior ULERPs that I just said, the, the previous five, we will be voting on those in the next full board meeting. So maybe we can bundle those, not 100% clear. You know, I don't know if we've ever had five at once, but you know, we're, we're definitely going to earn our stripes uh, as a board and as committees uh, within the next six weeks. So thank you all of us within the committee and thank you all for bearing with us uh, within the next uh, month or so. All right. Thank you, Adam. Uh, I just want to stress to everybody as well. Again, please look at the board calendar uh, to attend these meetings. Uh, if you want to have a say in this, uh, you know, we have been working very hard, uh, Jesus, the most out of everyone, in coordinating this to make sure that uh, we have proper time to review this, that there's public input, that there's board input. So please do not let that go to waste. Please do attend these meetings uh, and provide your input and perspective. Uh, and I want to thank again, Adam and the Land Use Committee, uh, because this is really <laughs> uh, going to be a, a very difficult uh, couple of weeks just from the amount of work that will be on their plates. So please do attend that. Um, are there any questions from the board for Adam and the committee? All right, seeing none. And Jesus, thank you for including the link in the chat for the calendar. Problem. Thank you all. All right, thank you. Uh, so next up, we have strategic community planning, Kavitha. Thanks, Kyle. Um, so we do have one resolution uh, for tonight, and it's on the on the um, comprehensive long term plan for the city. I think we've all heard about that and talked about it from Corey Johnson's from Speaker Johnson's office, and it was mentioned earlier tonight. So, um, any questions on that resolution? All right, I'm not seeing any questions. Oh, I see a question from Lou. Go ahead, Lou. Call the question. Seema? Seconded. All right, thank you. So let's go back to our digital ballot. Now, please mark your vote for this resolution. This is 4A, and do not hit submit. For those of you who are not using the digital ballot, we will ask for your vote verbally during the second roll call. All right, and while people do that, Kavitha, do you have a committee report? <clears throat> um, I'll keep it really brief. Uh, our, as Adam already mentioned, our next meeting will be on June 3rd and we'll have a discussion of the hotel text um, amendment. Um, we'll also be, I don't know if this is on the agenda yet and I'll, Jesus, I'll talk to you about this after, but I just wanna do a continuation of our um, budget items discussion carryover from our last meeting. And uh, other than that, we'll, we'll keep our eyes on any movement at MSBI or other projects, but um, that is really, that's really all I have. So. And I just wanna commend you Kavitha and Walls and the rest of the committee for putting together this resolution. This was very well thought out um, and you were very intentional um, about making sure that this was well thought out. So I appreciate that. Thanks Kyle, I can't take the credit. It was mostly, I'm gonna give credit to Anne, to Jim and Anne for doing the bulk of the work. I really appreciate it. Thank you. All right, are there any questions for the Strategic Community Planning Committee and Kavitha? All right, seeing none, thank you. Uh, next up, we have environment and parks, Kevin. Thank you, Kyle. Uh, first, a kudos to Brendan Berth for his appointment. That's wonderful. Um, at this month's environment and parks committee meeting, we unanimously passed a resolution for the Morgan Library and Museum to install window movers at the Morgan House at Madison Avenue and 37th Street. The AC there is obsolete and the outside fresh air provided is insufficient to working offices and corridors on the second and third floors. I just wanted to point out that the committee is sensitive to landmark preservation and question the removal. We are now confident not only that the windows will be carefully removed and stored on site for possible future reinstallation, 
but also that the Morgan is already a leader in preservation and with its architects, true experts in landmark changes that can be reversible if needed. Happy to answer any questions, but before that, um, actually big shout out to Raj for wordsmithing this resolution. Questions? All right, I'm not seeing any questions. Is there a call to question, Seema? Yeah, I'd like to call to question. <laughs> All right, is that seconded by anyone? Gene? Seconded. All right, thank you. So please go back to your digital ballot and please mark your vote for this resolution. This is 5A and do not hit submit. For those of you who are not using the digital ballot, we will ask for your vote verbally during the second roll call. And while people do that, Kevin, do you have a report? Uh, yes, I hope it's brief. Uh, first, an update uh, to the member of the public who spoke, uh, Ann Fursero, I believe. Two dog runs are actually slated for Murphy Brothers Playground, one for large dogs and one for smaller dogs. This is for behind the baseball field area, close to the waterfront on Avenue C and FDR Drive. And the dog run plans do call for water features and play mounds. Second, at this month's committee meeting, we continued amplifying public concerns on why the privately owned public space on First Avenue between 37th and 38th Streets has been inaccessible to the public for years. Sidewalk shed scaffolding had blocked it, even though no recent work has been reported there. Then before the meeting, we learned that the scaffolding permit was uh, renewed once again until November 25th of this year. We reached out to the property to give us the committee an explanation at the committee meeting. We're happy to report now that last week, the sidewalk shed started to come down and that area is now fully accessible to the general public. Um, also at this month's committee meeting, um, we had questions of other suspicious POPs permits and usage. I'll mention one quickly um, because John did mention the need for public preschool sites. We are questioning the NYC Parks deal that has granted a private preschool exclusive access to the St. Martin Garden since 1998 and the fact that parks did not allow the garden to be incorporated into the recent redesign of the park. That's it for me. All right. Thank you, Kevin. Are there any questions for Kevin? Uh, Asia, go ahead. Uh, Kevin, I just heard your report regarding that private. I, I, I appreciate you bringing that up. I do know that that private preschool is used by a lot of the community members. It's considered a, like a preschool co-op and was quite popular with the community. I don't know. They've been closed since COVID, I think, but I don't know if they've started again. Well, let me, I think it's worth, uh, since you mentioned that, thank you. There's six issues that were raised by the public and committee members about the garden mm -hmm. at this month's committee meeting. Let me just fire through them. One, the general yeah. public does not benefit from the exclusive use of the public garden uh, by the private preschool, um, nor by the garden's ex exclusion from the park design. We had a number of PS116 and PS281 parents, including parents leaders, and uh, they, to use one of their words, outraged, that uh, they do not have access to the garden. Um, the individual who has served as the director of the preschool since the start uh, stated to me on April 22nd that the public garden is, quote, my private garden, her words. Mm. She also stated that she would not allow the garden to be open to members of the general public because, quote, again, her words, they would junk up the place. And she also said that any effort to make the garden more accessible would be dismissed because, quote, Bloomberg has my back on this. I can go on. There's a lot of concern. No, it's not necessary. I, I'm sorry, I missed it. This was on your agenda, so I, I would have gone to hear about it. So sorry about that. But I thank just you. want everybody to know, because I've heard both sides of this, the, the, the public, uh, number of public members, we probably had over 30 that uh, mm -hmm. continue to ask questions and they feel that they're beginning to brush off by NYC Park. So we're going to continue to address this throughout um, our next meeting. All right, next up, Sandy. <clears throat> well, it, now that we're in that same area, is there any feedback on the MTA? It's full of garbage right now, That the, right across the street from that private garden. It is, and it's interesting because I received a, a letter back from um, 
the MTA who said, I know this looks like just a beautiful green space. It doesn't look beautiful, <laughs> Sandy <laughs> crashed. Yeah, it's full of trash. Um, you know, the, the person who's running the preschool says that she's afraid it would junk up the place to have people there. There are nobody there and it's junked up. So um, I haven't heard an update since the letter saying that we cannot uh, further discussion about public access to that green space. All right. Next up, uh, John. Yeah, first of all, I had my hand up to give a shout out to Kevin for getting basketball hoops to PS116. Thank you. But uh, the real now I'm wondering, Kevin, is there any point in our committees doing a joint reso on this uh, situation with the pre private pre-K? Maybe we should take that offline. But I, I would uh, like to take it offline, John. Thank you for bringing that up. There's yeah. a lot of other things that I didn't say um, right. that, uh, yep. uh, that, that need to be said and possibly offline. Got yep. it. All right. Thank you, Kevin. You're we'll welcome. next move on to transportation, Gene. Hello, everyone. Yes, this is an easy month for transportation. We've only got two resos and both of them are extremely straightforward. Uh, the first one is uh, the sketchy outline of what DOT intends to do with the 59th Street Bridge. Sketchy, I mean to say, uh, yes, they are in fact gonna separate the bike and pedestrians. Pedestrians will go on the south outer roadway of the bridge. Um, and they will be putting up some gates and a fence. And other than that, we don't know anything because they haven't done any traffic studies at either end of the bridge. And they, haven't, they are doing structural work on the bridge so that it can, because it needs load bearing maintenance uh, and stuff like that. So the bridge itself is unlikely to be reconfigured until sometime in 2022. But uh, we have this very straightforward resolution that basically says, yes, we think this is a good idea. And yes, we want to see the actual plans when you develop them. So please come back. And that's what the reso is. So if there are any questions about that. See a hand up from Adam. All the question. OK. Uh, B. Second. All right. So let's go to our digital ballot. And please mark your vote for this resolution, 6A. And do not hit submit. Those of you who are not using the digital ballot, again, we will ask for your vote verbally during the second roll call. All right, do you wanna talk about number two? Sure, uh, also very straightforward. Um, straight up and down, unanimously approved by the committee. The one thing I have to mention is at the end of the second whereas, um, the last word in that, in that, whereas is Sunday, it should be Saturday. That was a typo. Um, so please understand that when you're voting, it shouldn't make much of a difference, but that, that is, uh, that is what happens. So we will change it. Um, and that's it. Are there any questions? We got a hand up from Adam. All the question. Thank you. I also have a hand up from second Jim. Was that, was that you, Lou? Yeah. Was All right. So then I got a second. Yes. Point. So let's please go to mm. our digital ballots and mark your vote for 6B. And do not hit submit. And for those not using digital ballot, we will ask for your vote verbally during the second roll call. And so while people are doing that, do you want to give us your report, Gene? Sure. Uh, first thing, uh, Sam Schwartz is making an appointment with uh, DOT Manhattan Commissioner Ed Pinkar and Colleen Shattergun, as well as the appropriate section heads uh, to discuss our proposals for Third Avenue. Uh, when we know when that will be, uh, I will relay that information to you. Um, next month, we will be discussing uh, the possible expansion of the Second Avenue bike lanes in support of our elected officials, all of whom have called for that, given the numbers that are coming over the, the bridges and just up and down Second Avenue and First Avenue. Um, and we're also going to be um, discussing a couple of a couple of other things, uh, but um, you'll have to show up to find out what they are, or else you'll have to read the agenda. <laughs> I see a hand up from Adam. Adam, do you have a question? Uh, Gene, will anyone from the board be invited to the, the Third Avenue meeting with DOT and Sam Schwartz? Yes. 
Great. Uh, I will be going probably. Uh, Phil will be going. I'm not sure about Jesus. That'll depend on his time, whether he's found a third body to fill a slot, stuff like that. All right. Uh, are there any other questions for Gene? I see a hand up from Sandy. Um, Gene, just wondering if you know if he's incorporated some of our suggestions. Yes, he's incorporated some of your suggestions. All so right. you haven't seen yet what he's actually going to present. Mm -hmm. You have? Yeah, you basically did. Oh, okay. Are you going to distribute it to the committee? No. We'll put it up on the website at some point. It's already been passed twice. Uh, there's no point in further critiquing it right now. All we're doing is aiming at the meeting for DOT. They'll have their own critique. And again, remember, this is a long process. Even if they do agree to take on that part of Third Avenue, they're going to be doing their own traffic studies, their own surveys, and all their own stuff. So I don't want to get lost in the weeds about this. Let's just turn the page. Um, we don't need to critique, but it sure be nice to know what he's going to show. That's all. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you, Jean. I see okay, no thanks. questions. All right. Next up, we have Rick with Budget and Governmental Affairs. Well, <clears throat> we don't have any uh, resolutions for this meeting. Um, in our last committee meeting, we had an opportunity to hear from representatives from each of the council members who have part of our district, have a piece of our district as part of their district. Uh, I wanna thank Katie Loeb from Carlina Rivera's office, Ben Jacobs from Councilman Power's office, and Wilfred uh, Lopez, who is the legislative director for Councilmember Kalos. Um, there were, the, the timing for this is, first we need some updates. It gave us a good chance to just sort of make sure that things are still progressing. We got some good news in a couple cases but we're also, uh, this was kind of our last time to bring before the council members um, the, budget, the items on our district needs statement and budget requests so that they'd have something that they can rely on if it becomes necessary during the final budget consultations that they will be holding this next month. Um, the budget has to be passed by the end of June. Uh, it's gonna be kind of a frantic time for them. Uh, we, we all know that the budget is gonna be a, a difficult thing to work with, um, but we did have a couple items of, of particularly good news in the executive budget that the mayor uh, presented a couple of weeks ago. Uh, one of them was mentioned by Katie last month, and that's the uh, money that's gonna be made available for senior centers and the idea that there will be uh, a new senior center in each of the dis uh, community board districts um, this is something that we have been asking for for decades, and it, it does feel good that we've got some movement on this regard. Um, we still have to keep, a, keep an eye on it, though, because there's a question of just how this will be implemented, whether it'll be a, a, a new center as such, whether it'll be a um, naturally occurring retirement center in a building, um, whether it'll be just services that are provided all of which would be good, but we want to make sure that our needs are taken care of. So we'll be, we'll hope the committee, uh, appropriate committee will take care of that. Um, the other piece of uh, good news came from the, the proposal for a clean city core, uh, which will be um, people hired to do some cleanup in the city generally. It only lasts for a year, but they will be doing some of the work that needs to be done in the parks and we've had a lot of, um, at, at budget time, we always hear that uh, people want their parks to be safe, people want their parks to be clean, and this hopefully will be a, a good step in that direction. Of course, there are lots of things that haven't seen any movement whatsoever. We'll keep, keep doing that. Um, and I just wanna remind everyone that the, the budget requests and the, the contributions to the district needs statement come from the, the committees with subject matter jurisdiction. So if it's an education matter, it comes from the education committee. If it's a land use matter, it comes from the land use committee. The, the budget committee doesn't manufacture these out of thin air. So it's important for you to have a discussion in your committees and bring, them, bring the uh, items to our attention so that we can then rank order them against each other and then create the district need statement based on that. So um, that's just a little reminder. Uh, I'll be mentioning it to the committee chairs next week. Um, we, we may have to have, a, we will not be having a meeting uh, next month, 
but we might have a meeting over the summer. Uh, it just depends on how, how much work we have to do to prepare the district needs statement. And that's it. All right, I have a question from Jim. Jim. Rick, uh, uh, do we know whether the funding for the senior centers is going to be continuous or is it coming from the uh, stimulus funds? Ah, uh, I have to be careful about this. I'll bet you Katie, if she's still on, probably knows better than I do, but um, it's my understanding that it would have to be continuous. I mean, I don't see how it could okay. only be a one-time, one-shot okay. deal. But it is, that's a very good point because that's what the problem is with the, um, the, the clean, clean the, core. Yeah. The clean core is only for one year. Uh, so if it was just from the stimulus money, we'd be in trouble. It wouldn't make any sense. Uh, but, but that's a good point. We'll have, to, we'll have to monitor that. And the other thing is, as you speak to the chairs, could you just emphasize the more specificity they have, the better off we are in terms of approving or, or working with their request as opposed to just asking for more, you know? Yep. I think we've had this discussion any number of times. Yep, I, I, uh, I second Jim's uh, suggestion and uh, all the committee chairs are on the line so they can hear it right now. And specificity helps us. We, uh, it, in fact, writing out the section itself, just actually putting it down in words helps us even more. Hmm. All right, I have a question or comment from Reshma. Uh, thank you, uh, Kyle and Rick. Uh, mine was more a comment in the beginning when we had electeds. Um, I think a question was asked about the Greenway for yeah. from the representative from Liz Kruger's office, and that there's money in the city budget for a Greenway, and the plan is to have the continuous Greenway done finally for all of Manhattan. Yeah, good point. Thank you, Rashma. Yeah, yeah. And, and they're also doing the bike lanes on the Queensboro Bridge as well which was, you know, those are two things that we have been talking about for some time now. Yes, good, thank you. Thank you. And Anne, I see your hand up. Um, yeah, this is actually kind of a question for Reshma because I saw just like a real headline about there being money uh, in the budget for it in some presentation. But when I dug a little deeper, I, you know, and I was sort of just like Googling around and I, I couldn't find it anywhere like the mayor's office or, um, you know, the couple of the sites are, you know, nyc.gov. So if, if you've got something solid on that, that you could send me, I'd love to see it. Sure. It's in, it's a very big package of in the capital program stuff. I think, but I'll find that for you and I'll send you an email. Thanks a lot. All right. Jean. Yeah. I just wanted to add that uh, it is in the, it is in the budget as far as I know. However, the budget is not uh, approved or done or anything else yet. And in fact, um, one of the budgetary tricks that our outgoing mayor is using is taking $15 billion worth of federal funds and infusing them into the first 18 or 24 months of the budget uh, for the next two years. And the budget for that Greenway and the completion of it uh, extends out to, if I remember right, 2029. So there's some doubt about exactly how much money will be where at any point as of right now. So um, it's on paper, but it doesn't really exist yet. It would be the, my take on it. Just for what it's worth. No, that's that's a good point, Gene. Actually, quite a few things, you know, uh, the cleanup core, that as well as even the universal 3K, which I think is a really important program is not being fully funded long term. And, you know, we need to keep our eye on that because we can't have these programs start and then not be continued. All right, thank you. And then Ronnie. Um, you know what? My point is exactly uh, tied in. Um, because uh, it is, it's just, it's contingent. Everyone has made these proclamations, but um, they're waiting for it to come from DC. And uh, then it would be uh, budgeted uh, to, for the next uh, few years, uh, just in case. Um, but that's, you really have to keep that in mind. Thanks. Thank you, Ronnie. And that's for everything, all, 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 so many different projects, thanks. Mm -hmm. All right, well, thank you so much, Rick. Uh, and we'll move on to the next committee. Uh, housing and homelessness, Corinne. Thank you, Kyle. We're uh, waiving our report. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Next up, we have business affairs and licensing, Claire. Hi, everyone. Um, 
good to see you tonight. There are there were a lot of renewals, as you can tell, um, which is great. Um, the city's coming back. I see a few hands raised, so maybe Jean. Jean. Bundle. That's seconded. Anne. Um, yeah, I have a I have a question about the first item, which is um, I'm just wondering. This is the same location, but a different operator than pre-COVID. Is that correct? Yes. Thanks. I also want to say on 9H, there is a typo and it says like removal of a license, but that actually should be um, like renewal or no objection to granting. Um, so I'll just send that note in to the office, but I'm fine to bundle these unless B had a different question. All right, we can second the bundle. Okay, thank you, B. Mr. Chair? Yep. I'd like to offer a technical amendment to 9H. It's not, it's not hostile, it's a technical amendment. Who's speaking? Um, the Lou, Mr. Person. Thank you, yeah. Lou. The, the title should read, no objection to a transfer of an on-premise. Removal is not the correct word in that location at that right. time. Yeah, so Claire just uh, mentioned that edit, so. But good eye, Lou, and thank you for bringing that up. Um, um, this, this is Seema. Claire, who, um, who's, who made the motion to bundle just for the minutes? Uh, it was Jean. Jean, Jean cool, thanks. Yep. And B seconded it. Got it, thank you. Right. So I guess. Yep. So let's go back to our digital ballot and mark your vote for 9A through H. And a little help from uh, Jesus or Brendan to get to the ballot. All right. And once you have marked your vote for all of those resolutions, 9A through H, uh, then you can hit submit. And again, for those who are not using the digital ballot, we will ask for your vote verbally during the second roll call. Okay. Right. So do you want to give your report clear while people are? Yep. So we are going to be talking about um, support for small businesses in the recovery in our next meeting. So I would encourage you all to join us. Um, that's next Thursday at the 27th. I also want to mention, I'm sure everyone has heard this, but starting today, actually, um, businesses are able to operate at 100% capacity. Um, I think you still have to, they still have to be like six foot separated and um, masks have to be required for people who aren't vaccinated, but there's a lot of information out there about that and um, it's pretty exciting. Other than that, I don't have much else to report. All right, thank you, Claire. Are there any questions for Claire and the Business Affairs and Licensing Committee? Uh, Ronnie? Um, hi, Claire. Um, hi, everyone. Um, as far as business, Claire, uh, would you also please make sure that on the CB6 website uh, that the information for the small restaurant and venue owners um, in our district, their paperwork has to be in by the 24th of this month. And for all the other small businesses, uh, their PPP -E uh, IDL paperwork must be completed by the 31st. Thank you. Sure. Thanks, Ronnie. Thank you, Ronnie. All right, seeing no further questions for Claire, thank you so much. All right, and then last but not least, we'll move to Health and Human Services, LV. Uh, thank you, Kyle. Good evening, everyone. 
Last week, we had a very good presentation from Alex Gomez, the director of New York Project Hope at the Department of Health on the statewide crisis counseling response to COVID-19 pandemic. And the referral to the counseling will be in our website. Second, we are collaborating with the NYU Langone Health in planning for a series of healthy living virtual seminars once a month in the evening, starting September 2021 to March 2022. So we need the support of everyone in promoting this series of seminars. And last, we plan to support the hospital and nursing home staffing bill that is proposed by the Nurses Association of New York by writing a wrestle. So this will be discussed in our next meeting. Thank you. Thank you, Elvi. Are there any questions for Elvi and Health and Human Services? How much you want to do to that pasta that's there? Uh, seeing no further questions, uh, we'll move on. All right, so that concludes our committee reports and resolutions. Uh, we're now moving on to older new business. Board members, if you have any older new business to state, please raise your hand through Zoom. Uh, Jim? Yeah, just on new business, uh, hearing, hearing the comments of the uh, members of the public who spoke earlier about, uh, about the... Um, the dogs on the sidewalk, you know, urinating on the sidewalk and uh, the noise levels and what have you. I'm wondering if perhaps we should consider a quality of life uh, committee so to address these kinds of things, maybe merge it in with public safety or, or some other committee. Um, it just, there's a lot of this stuff going on now since the pandemic and, um, I just don't see the city addressing much of it. They have other priorities at the moment. Thank you, Jim. Uh, Claude? Uh, this is for Jesus. Uh, on the ballot, it didn't allow me to submit because push, uh, item 1B was not answered. Do you want, how do you want to deal with that? Uh, just answer whatever you want. We're gonna strip that out of the ballot anyway, so it won't matter. Okay, thank you. Thank you. All right. Uh, is there any other old or new business? All right, seeing no hands, uh, we'll move on to the second roll call. On order. Uh, uh, Jim, go ahead. Uh, uh, this is a extraordinary meeting. Uh, we put it off because of, uh, because of the holiday. Mm -hmm. So, the, no, it doesn't really matter whether people are signed in or not because they're automatically excused for being off the calendar. So I don't know if we need a, a roll call on the second half. Well, we're, we're going to do it anyway, just for the records, but noted. Thank you, Jim. Mm -hmm. All right, guys, I will uh, uh, state your name if you could just take yourself off mute. And then I'll also know if you need to submit your ballot in case I don't see it. Um, cataloged on the back end. Uh, Kyle? Present. Asia? Present. Neil? Not here. Uh, no, no, I, I'm here. I'm here. Present. Okay, great. Um, you will need to submit your ballot then. Okay. Um, I'm driving right now, but I'll, I'll, I'll try to get to it. Okay. Thanks. Uh, Martin Barrett? Present. Neil, just to go back, I'm, I'm going to guess that you're going to do it on your own, or do you want me to verbally capture all of your um, responses to the various resolutions here? Um, I, I can just do it on my own. Okay. And I'm, I'm guessing, Jesus, that that's fine? If it's not done by the time you're ready to call the vote, uh, Neil's going to have to go without voting. Okay. Did you hear that, Neil? Did you get that? Uh, yeah. Yeah. I Okay, uh, I'll actually be fine then. I can miss the vote, that's fine. Okay, so you'll vote, great. Um, LV Barroso? Present. 
Matt Bondi? Here. Claire Brennan? Present. Jim Collins? Here. Dan Devine? Present. Beatrice Desmond? Present. Jeannie D'Onofrio? Present. Rick Eggers? Here. Charles Fernandez? Present. Andrew Gross? Andrew, are you still here? I know you were here in the beginning. Okay, moving on, Adam Hartke. Here. Molly Hollister. Here. Paige Judge. I don't think Paige was here today. Yusuf Khalid. Yusuf? Uh, John Keller. Okay, great. John Keller. Here, and I want this to count as a do over if I miss a meeting. Thanks. <laughs> Abigail Kruzmark. Present. Anton Malner. Present. Kavita Matthew. Present. Sandra McKee. Present. Wells McGovern. Present. Richard Mintz. Present. Philip Napolitano. Uh, Roger Schneier. Present. Kevin O'Keefe. Present. It's okay to. Krishma Patel. Present. Matt Roberts. Present. Uh, Jean Santoro. Here. Uh, Frank Scala. Uh, Lawrence Scher. Here. Ann Seligman. Here. Lou Sapersky. Lou, I think you're here. All right. So Lou, I don't hear Lou. Sean Sherman. Here. Sandra Gerard. Not here. Um, Letty Simon. Letty? I know you were here in the beginning. Okay. Uh, Susan Steinberg. Here. Anju Suresh. Here. Mark Thompson. I think he's excused. Corinne Vanderdonk. Here. Brian Van Nuvenhoven. Present. Ronnie White. Ronnie White. Present. Claude Winfield. Yo. Great. So I will go through the resolutions. Public Safety 1A passes 38 in favor, zero opposed, zero abstained, zero nine entitled. Uh, 1B has been withdrawn. 4A passes 38 in favor, zero opposed, zero abstained, zero not entitled. 5A passes uh, 38 in favor, zero opposed, zero abstained, zero not entitled. Uh, 6A uh, passes 36 in favor, one opposed, zero abstentions, one not entitled. 6B passes 38 in favor and one opposed. Um, 9A through I believe 9H all pass and I'm just confirming that they all pass with the same um, vote distribution. Yes, they all pass 38 in favor, zero opposed, zero abstain, zero not entitled. And I believe that's the last one. All right. And Lou, do you have? Your yeah, I didn't get recorded as this on the second roll call. I was having trouble with uh, getting unmuted. Great. I'll, I'll record you now. Thank you. And you should also note that um, I saw, see that Letty is still here. So Letty should also be recorded. Okay. I'll do that. Thank you. All right, so if there are no objections, we will adjourn the meeting. Seeing no objections and no further business, the meeting is adjourned at 8.35 p.m. <laughs>